Good morning. How are you? I hope you're having a good morning and all that stuff. What is today? Today's Thursday. I know this. I really do know this. I promise. I know this. What day, what day it is. <laughs> I hope you're having a great day. As a matter of fact, I know today's Thursday, and that means tonight we will be having our, our Bible study, First John. First John chapter 3. Uh, I think my Bible study guide's in the bedroom. And, oh, no, here it is. I thought I had it in there. I think it's actually here. But it, you can grab a copy or I can send you a PDF and uh, you can join us tonight. We should be finishing out uh, chapter 3 and starting on chapter 4 tonight is what it's looking like according to my notes in my book. <laughs> so uh, we hope so. It, uh, it's been fun. You can also see all the videos on YouTube. Uh, they're all in the first John folder. All of our James study, uh, James studies that we did also by the way of zoom and on here on live face facebook live are on my youtube channel too so uh, if you want you can run over there and check them i'll put the link here so you can go check them out but you i also have a short series on how to study the bible i have one more video i want to put in that series but i talk about um which translation to use bible study methods and things like that and uh you know it all starts with reading the bible it's, it's really that simple. It just kind of starts with that and ends with that is reading the Bible. Get your, get your head in there and get around in there and figure it out, right? So uh, anyway, check out that YouTube channel. And all these devotionals are over there too. A lot of people prefer to listen to it through YouTube. It's on the app. It's easier, I guess, to access. You can subscribe to it. Then you'll get a notice when uh, I get put something new up. And I do have several, several projects in the works, but I'm not going to leak that information yet, right? <laughs> so anyway... Here's where my thinking was this morning. Now, I titled this the Motley Crew, and Motley Crew means like very different in appearance, a little bit crude on the side, and things like that. Because I was thinking back about, I was thinking about a lot of things, and I, and but I found myself once again in John 14:27, and here I, I had a totally different thought about this scripture this morning. Now, Jesus said, "My, uh, I." I'm in the wrong chapter. John 14, 27 says, Peace, my peace, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Right? That was kind of our foundational verse. We didn't start, I don't think I started on the first day with that, but it was like the second day or so when we started this about two and a half years ago, give or take. And it was all... I wanted to be that voice of peace because we were getting inundated with fear, with everybody's dying, and a lot of people did die. I mean, it's not like, <laughs> you know, and so it's not that the some of the information wasn't false. It wasn't necessarily that it was false. It was that it could be really troubling, and we didn't, you know, I, I remember being, <laughs> we, were, we did some crazy things in those early days because we didn't know, right? And, uh, but anyway, we were getting so, we were just getting a barrage of, of negative stuff. And I was like, you know what? God's peace did not go away when the pandemic started. When the virus was created in Wuhan, God didn't say, oh, never mind, forget it. I'm taking it back. Forget it, right? It doesn't go away when you get a bad phone, a phone call and something bad happened to somebody you love. It doesn't go away when you get a bad diagnosis from the from the doctor or you don't or you're having a health issue or you're having a mental health issue or you're having a financial issue or you're having a marital issue or a relationship it doesn't matter his peace doesn't go away and so I was thinking about that this morning and here's what I thought about I thought wow you know who he was talking to he was talking to the disciples as a matter of fact this is Right after Judas, not not Iscariot, but the other Judas had asked him a question, and he's answering a question: uh, "How is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world?" And he bega Jesus began to talk about trusting in Him, and He gave us peace and all these things, right? And so I started thinking about who was there. Well, we start with Peter, James, and John in a sailboat. Peter, James, or Peter, James, John, Judas. There's two Judases actually. Uh, Philip, is all, Philip and Bartholomew, is that right? I don't know. I, I need to go back and refresh my mom, my memory on the 12 disciples, don't I? But anyway, the disciples were there. They were asking him questions, right? He was talking to them. They, they were saying, well, what about when this happened? What about when that happened? You know, boy, I'd like to just sit down and ask a couple of questions, right? And so he was asking, as a matter of fact, Philip had asked, asked him a question a bit earlier. earlier. Uh, Thomas 
ask him a question. So he's just probably sitting and talk. Peter asked a question. So Peter asked a question. Thomas asked a question. Philip asked a question. Judas, not Iscariot, asked a question. So they're all sitting there. And I started thinking, he gave this scripture, peace, I leave with you. My peace, Jesus said, I'm give, I give it to you. Judas Iscariot was sitting there, the one who just a few chapters over is going to kiss him with a, with a bet and betray him into the hands of those who are going to crucify him. And then he was going to go kill himself because he didn't tap into that peace. He didn't understand that peace. He, maybe he didn't, he didn't quite grasp what was going on, right? Peter, Peter, we just said, asked a question just a chapter or two back. Peter was going to deny him three times. He said, "You'll deny me three times before morning comes." In fact, uh, he had just he had just prophesied that. Uh, I think, yeah. In the end of chapter thirteen, he said, "Simon Peter said to him, where are you going?'" He said, I'm, "Where I'm going, you can't follow me." And he said, "Will you lay down your life for my sake?" Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow until you have denied me three times. He said, "So by morning, you're going to say you don't know me three times." Right? So Peter's standing there when Jesus says, My peace I'm giving to you. So we have kind of a motley crew here, you know? Uh, matter of fact, we're going to see later, right after the resurrection, they all just go, Forget it. We're going to go back out and uh, go back to fishing. <laughs> they went back out and got in the boat. So let's just go back to the life we know. This one didn't work out very good. And so Jesus is talking to a motley crew here, a crew of people that are going to deny him, betray him to death not pray with him for an hour when he asks them, right? And and so I was thinking, wow. And Jesus didn't say, well, I would give my peace to you, but you guys are just kind of crazy. He didn't disqualify Judas, who was going to betray him, or actually God was going to commit treason, basically, in a sense. He didn't disqualify Peter, who was going to say, I don't know him, I don't know him, out of f total fear. He didn't disqualify any. He didn't, you know, Thomas, we always call him Doubting Thomas because he's like, until I see it, I don't believe it. He might have been from Missouri because we teach that about that being the show me state, right? Maybe he was from Missouri. No, I'm just kidding. But he didn't disqualify any of these people. They were sitting right there with him. They had even watched him do miracles. They had walked with him. They had heard his teaching, and yet they didn't quite get it. Oh, how much do we not get, right? But it doesn't disqualify us from getting his peace. Whether we quite get it or not, whether we, we sit and spend hours pouring over the Word every day, or we it, it's hard to squeeze that 15, 20 minutes of reading in in the morning. We just use a, a little devotional written by a friend to study the Bible a little bit in the morning. It doesn't matter. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to give you peace. However, you got this. here's this list of qualifications for you to get it. Here, here's a, here's a to-do list. you got to check all these off in in the in the proper order by noon or you don't get it he didn't say you got to do this to get it he didn't say if you do this you're no longer qualified to get my peace no he was talking to people who were going to betray him and and hand him over to the enemy and yet he says my peace i give to you now did they take it we don't know. I'm guessing not, <laughs> especially not a couple, right? It's irrelevant whether you take it or not. He gave it anyway. He gave it anyway. And so I need to know that sometimes because I can be a crazy little mess over here, right? <laughs> right? Life gets kind of goofy sometimes. My head, Things get all messed up in my head. My heart starts racing for real. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. He didn't take it back. He also didn't say that. He also didn't say, okay, I'm going to give my peace to you crazy people. But if you do this, I'm taking it back. If you do that, I'm taking it back. If you don't do this just right, it's all mine. No, he just said, here's my peace. Take it. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Isn't that amazing? And he had a motley crew sitting right there. They were crazy, some crazy old dudes, right? They were hard, hard-nosed little fishermen dudes, right? They were, they were probably buff, and and they they were used to hard labor and you know working hard to pulling in the nets and things. They probably had some some mega muscles. I don't know, right? 
but he was talking to a motley crew. He wasn't talking to the Sanhedrin, which would have, he didn't, he, on purpose. <laughs> the Sanhedrin can have the peace too, right, if they want it. He wasn't talking to the Pharisees. He wasn't talking to the religious leaders. He, he, he wasn't even talking later to Paul, or, although Paul tapped into it and he knew he could have peace, and he kept saying he's the God of peace, right? That just blows my mind. So if you don't have your life all together today, it does not disqualify you. All you have to do is take hold of that peace and let it reign. If you've denied him before in your actions, in your words, in your lifestyle, just stop. Repent. Take his peace because P- Peter didn't have to wait around for it. And we see Peter becoming just a major apostle uh, in the rest of the New Testament. Even though he messed up that night, Jesus prophesied that he did it. But Peter, Jesus also told Peter, I prayed for you so your faith won't fail. But we know now that Jesus ever lives to intercede for our souls. He's con- his blood still cries out, they're righteous. His blood still cries out, they're trusting me. His blood still cries out, ah, my peace is theirs. Right? He paid for it. So, if you're part of the motley crew, or you're part of the religious crew, or you're part of the perfect crew, wherever you think you fit in the scheme of things, it don't matter. Jesus gives you his peace. All you got to do is let it rain. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Trust in him today. He's got this. He's got you. Have a great day. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow.